Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Datamatics Global Services Limited Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from Investor Relations EY LLP. Thank you, and over to you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Roshit. Good afternoon to all participants in the call today. Welcome to the Q2 FY23 earnings call of Datamatics Global Services Limited. The results and investor presentation have been already made to you, and it is also available on our website, www.datamatics.com. In case anyone has not received the copy of press release and presentation, please do write to us and we will be happy to send it out to you all. To take us through the results today and to answer your questions, we have with us the top management of the company represented by Rahul Kanodia, Vice Chairman and CEO, Sandeep Mantri, EVP and Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Mittal Mehta, EVP and Chief Marketing Officer. Rahul will start the call with brief overview of the quarter on business, which will be then followed by financials, which will be given by Sandeep. We will then open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call, which gives any outlook for the future, or which can be construed as forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainty that we face. This risk and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual report, which you can find it on our website. With that said, I now hand over the call to Rahul. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Asha. And welcome and thank you, everyone, for joining our Q2 FI23 earnings call. We are glad to have you all with us on this call today. I hope each and every one of you had a great Diwali and I wish you a very happy and prosperous New Year. We announced our Q2 results on October 28th, detailing out our operational performance. I will touch upon some of the key business performance, and Sandeep will uh, update you on the financial and post that we will get into the Q&A. On the business front, I'm happy with the overall performance of the business. We have continued our revenue growth momentum from Q1, and saw a growth of 14.2% on a year-on-year -year basis. The year-on-year -year growth was broad-based across all three segments of digital operations, digital experiences, and digital technologies. Our EBIT margins on a year-on-year -year basis reduced marginally from 12.8% to 12.3%, primarily due to the increased cost of salaries and some cyclicality in our business. We are seeing a drop in margins across the industry this quarter, however, we are confident that our margins will be stable during the rest of the financial year. Our margins at the digital operations and digital experiences for this quarter remain healthy at 22.7% and 25.4% respectively. We expect these operations to continue giving healthy margins in the same range. Our margins and digital technologies improved marginally from a negative 4.3% to a negative 2%. This improvement was driven by stabilization in a large shrinking account, growth in new customer acquisition, renegotiating prices, and deweeding low margin customers. In parallel, we continue to focus on the US and European markets. We are confident that we will further improve our margins in this financial year. Our attrition stood at 20%, which is in line with the industry. This is the result of efforts we have put in into retaining, training, and upskilling key talent. As, as well as the market environment is cooling off a bit, we expect this to further come down in the coming quarters. While there are recessionary feelers on the horizon, we are not experiencing any shrinkage in demand. Our, in Q2, we signed a new business worth $29 million, which is about 50% more than Q1. In H1, we have signed a total contract value of $48.3 million, and our deal pipeline remains healthy. In conclusion, going forward, we are optimistic about our overall demand environment and are confident of maintaining a growth of 15% in the coming year. With that, I will now hand over our call to our CFO, Mr. Sandeep Mantri. Sandeep, over to you. 
Thank you, Rahul. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us in Q2 FY23 earning call. I hope everyone had a wonderful time during this festive season. Let me take you through the financial performance for the quarter ended September 30, 2022. Um, our quarter 2 FY23 revenue is stood at 343.4 crores, which is up by 5.1% on a sequential basis and 14.8% on a YOI basis. Our consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was 51.7 crores, which is up 8% on a sequential basis and 3.6% on YOY basis. Our EBITDA margin for the quarter was 15% compared to 14.6% in Q1, which is a slight increase from the, uh, from the last quarter. Our consolidated EBIT for the quarter was 42.9 crores, which is up 9.1% on a sequential basis and 2.4% on YOY basis. Our EBIT margin for the quarter was at 12.5% compared to 12.1% in Q1. Uh, and we aspire to maintain this double digit healthy margin in coming quarters as well. Our other income on a consolidated basis is stood at 9.6 crore compared to rupees 13.2 crore in the last quarter. The primary reason for uh, drop in other income was export incentive, which was one-time export incentive, which was booked in last quarter. Our tax rate for this quarter was at 23.8 percent, compared to 17.3 percent in last quarter. The primary reason for increase in tax rate during this quarter is change in profit mix of various legal entities. However, we expect our tax rate to be in 20 to 22 percent range on an yearly basis. Our quarterly paid after NCI was at 40 crore, which is a growth of 13.2 percent on a YOI basis. However, there is a decrease by 7.9 percent on a sequential basis. Uh, when we come to our segment-wise performance, uh, we have three segments, which is digital operation, digital experience, and digital technologies. So our digital operations revenue was at 143.2 crore, which is down 2.9 percent on a sequential basis, but have grown 12.6 percent on a YOY basis. Digital operation EBIT margin remains very healthy at 22.7 percent. Uh, coming to our digital experiences, the revenue was at 52.4 crores, which is up 13.4 percent on sequential basis and 39.9 percent on a YOI basis. Uh, digital experience EBIT margins remains very healthy at 25.4 percent. Uh, on digital technology revenue, we are at 147.8 crore in this quarter, which is 11 percent sequential growth and 9.8 percent on a YOI basis growth. Uh, digital technologies EBIT margin for the quarter remains negative at 2 percent compared to 4.3 percent negative in Q1. Hence, there is a recovery in profitability. As explained by Rahul, uh, we are confident that we will further improve the margin for digital technology segment in this financial year. Uh, now, coming to half yearly financials, our revenue was at 670.3 crore for this half. This is a growth of 14.2 percent. Our EBITDA was at 99.5 crores, which is up by 9 percent compared to previous year. Our EBITDA margin for H1 was at 14.8 percent compared to 15.6 percent in H1 of previous year. Our EBIT was at 82.1 crores, up by 9.2 percent. Our EBIT margin for H1 was at 12.3 percent compared to 12.8 percent in H1 of previous year. Uh, our other income was at 22.8 crore as compared to 8.5 crore last year, which is a significant growth of 168 percent. This is primarily due to increase in investment income, uh, exchange gain, and export incentives. Tax rate for H1 was at 20.6 percent compared to 20 percent in H1 of previous year. Uh, which is, so our tax rate is stable at 20, 22 percent. Our PBT before exceptional item was at 103.1 crore compared to 82.8 crore, which is up by 24 percent, 24.5 percent. Our H1 PAT after NCI was at 83.4 crore compared to 74.9 crore, which is a growth of 11.3 percent over previous year. Uh, if we see segment-wise uh, results for this, this first half of FY23, our digital operation revenue was at 290.6 crore up 15.3 percent. Uh, operations, digital operations EBIT margin remains healthy at, at 23 percent. 
Our digital experiences revenue was at 98.7 crores, which is 29.2 percent uh, growth over previous quarter and uh, previous half of the previous year. Uh, digital experiences EBIT margins remain healthy at 24.4 percent. Uh, on digital technologies revenue, we were at 281.281 crores, which is up 8.7 percent on YOY basis. EBIT margin for the H1 remains at minus 3.1 percent. Uh, coming to balance sheet, our balance sheet continues to remain at a very healthy position. As on September 30, 22, our total cash and cash equivalent plus current investment net of debt is stood at 375.9 crores. Uh, on, on talking about DSO, as of 30th September, we were at 62 days compared to 74 days uh, as at 31st of March in previous year. Uh, in terms of geographical footprint, U.S. is the largest geography with 54% of our business coming from U.S. India is 28%. Rest of the world, including U.K. and Europe, is 18%. In terms of industries, BFSI continues to remain largest segment of, uh, for us, which is 24% of our revenue, followed by education and publishing, which is 23%, then technology and consulting, which is 18%. Manufacturing, infra and logistics is at 13%. Non-profit or non-government or organization at 11%, retail at 7% of our business. Rest all are 4% of our total revenue. Our client concentration remains very healthy with top 5, 10 and 20 clients contributing to 26%, 35% and 50% respect. respectively. We added 26 new clients in this quarter. So with this, uh, I will now pass on the call to operator to open the floor for questions. Thank you for your patience and continued interest in data metrics. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time may enter star then one on their touchstone telephones. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may enter star then two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Yash Patel from Choice International. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on a good set of numbers. Just a small bookkeeping question, sir. Uh, can we know the total number of headcounts for this quarter or any net addition for this quarter? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you say that again, please? Uh, so congratulations on the good set of numbers. Yes. Uh, may we know the uh, total headcount for this quarter or any net addition for this quarter? Total headcount for this quarter, we are running at about 11,300 odd. Uh, last quarter, we were at 10,900, so we've had a net increase of about 400. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, participants who would like to ask a question may enter star 1 to ask a question. To ask a question at this time, please enter star then 1. Our next question is from the line of Pavan Kumar from Ratnatreya Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, how is the progress on uh, our, uh, on our uh, ticketing uh, uh, ticketing so, uh, uh, project revenues from uh, 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 Indian Metro? Uh, and uh, what, is, what is the kind of scale-up we can expect or expect in terms of that domestic revenues going forward? Yeah, uh, so I had mentioned in our earlier call uh, that we have recently been awarded two contracts. One is Kolkata Metro, which is uh, uh, has been kicked off. The other one is NCRTC, which is the Delhi Merit segment. Uh, both these contracts have been awarded to us. Uh, we've started work on it. However, we've not accrued any... Uh, revenues because they're still in the initial phase, but certainly within this financial year, we will see an uptake in the revenues from the AFC business. Uh, we are in. We've got a healthy pipeline. We've bid. We've bid for several projects, 
but obviously we cannot uh, talk about them till we don't win them or lose them or till there's a clear decision. Uh, so as as those contracts materialize, we will certainly uh, you know bring it to the notice of of all the investors and analysts. So right now the pipeline is looking healthy, and we've got two large contracts recently, uh, which have just about started. And uh, how would the accounting be in the sense? Uh, you know, I am assuming the expenses part until now for the for that work on projects would already have been done through P and L, right? Yes, yes. But the revenue is not recorded. So we we account for the revenue based on percentage completion method, uh, which is basically markup over cost. So estimated cost and estimated revenue, and whatever is the markup basis that we recognize revenue. So there is a there is a minor, I mean very insignificant recognition as of today, uh, as of uh, this quarter. But from I think next this quarter, current quarter, we will start accruing revenue for NCRTC as well as Kolkata Metro, both the projects. From which co which quarter you said, sir? From, from this October quarter. Three. Huh? October quarter. Q3. Okay. 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 And uh, once these particular uh, revenues start kicking in, uh, is there uh, a chance if the if the global re uh, global revenue growth also remains constant that we might overshoot our growth growth projections? As ex as explained in last call also, and uh, we are maintaining our guidance for revenue growth at about 15% as of the moment because of uh, mm -hmm. many uncertain factors which are playing in the market. But having said that, it may you know it may grow beyond that as well. But as of now, we are mostly guiding uh, maintaining a guidance for 15% revenue growth. Yeah, but our confidence uh, remains high. Okay. And what can be what can be uh, the incremental uh, uh, what should I say uh, expense that should come on the cost structures uh, going forward, especially on the employee front from next quarter? So on the employee front, the cost structures. Okay, so one is that we do see the market cooling off a little bit. Uh, so we do mm -hmm. see uh, reduced attrition. I mentioned in my address that. Is running at 20%, which is very much in line with the industry. Uh, having said that, the the attrition factor is still there. Uh, we have been able to renegotiate prices with several customers, anywhere between 5% to 20% uh, hike, mm -hmm. and that has offset some of the hike in salaries that we have had to give. Uh, okay. So I don't think the uh, the hike in salaries of the cost uh, associated with that will be very high because we see the market cooling off a little bit and we've been able to adjust it with the price hikes that we have got from customers. Okay. okay. And margin for uh, what would be our uh, outlook on in terms of margins sir, going forward? So, so our margin, as we explained in last call as well, our margins are likely to be remain in likely to remain in the same range, which is, uh, you know, if we talk about EBITDA, which is 15 to 16 percent. If we talk about EBIT, it is between 12 to 13 percent. That's what we are maintaining. And if you if you see so, last two quarters, we are in the in the expected range. Okay, fine. But we are not seeing any kind of deceleration there. No, not really. Okay, that's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants that you may enter star 1 to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Shreya Bhivalkar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Okay, hi. Hello, everybody. First of all, congratulations on the good number. My question is about moonlighting. So I just wanted to know what are your views on moonlighting? Uh, as, I, as I see, industry views are kind of divided. So just wanted to know, will you allow it at Datamatics or how it is? Uh, no, it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, we do not encourage moonlighting. Uh, as it is, there's a shortage of uh, staff. Uh, the attrition is being high. Uh, so people are working extra hours anyway. A uh, few cases that have come to our attention, we have uh, parted with those employees. We've had an honest conversation with them and then when it was established that they were uh, two-timing or three-timing, we did uh, sort of separate from them. 
so as a company our policy does not encourage moonlighting okay okay thank you thank you so much thank you very much ladies and gentlemen you may enter star 1 to ask a question at this time our next question is from the line of asha gupta please go ahead hi thank you management for the opportunity um, i would like to ask that uh, given the macro level or macro concerns are going on like us in us there is a fear of recession and europe also is uh, struggling uh, on the macro level like energy and gas, gas thing so do we see any pressure coming on our business due to this macro issues in us as well as in uk or europe uh no we don't see we don't see any major uh, impact uh one there is a miasma on the environment in the world but uh, as i mentioned in my address that our our pipeline is very strong at the number of uh, deals we signed we've signed 29 million dollars in q2 which is almost a 50% higher than q1 so we're not seeing any slowdown in in our business having said that uh, there is this uncertainty that remains with the war with ukraine and the china economic war that you see uh, oil prices uh, fear of europe going into a recession america fortunately seems to have bounced back uh, this quarter uh, they are showing a positive gdp growth so that's that's looking positive so they seem to have turned the corner hopefully europe still is very uncertain and uh, on uh, on a tight rope but as far as our business is concerned we don't see any major impact Sure. Thank you. Uh, in terms of industry-wise, do you see any pressure on any of the industry like BFSI or education and publishing or technology? No, no. Not we 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 see an even growth across industry, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no, we don't see anything. Uh, we've not been very heavy in the hospitality and transport segment, and those were the ones that were hit quite bad by COVID. Uh, they seem to have bounced back, but it's not impacting our numbers because those are uh, not very large segments for us. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, you may enter star 1 now. Participants who have a question may enter star 1 now. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being on the call with us. I once again wish you a very happy new year, and hopefully, we will meet next quarter and uh, share some some good stories about our performance. I look forward to uh, engaging with you again next quarter. Thank you again. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Datamatics Global Services Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your line.